first I was very hesitant and I couldn't decide if I should get the X-H2 or the X-H2S because the 600 pounds price difference was too steep even though the X-H2S seems like the perfect camera for me especially because I mostly make videos so up until January the lowest price I could find online for the X-H2S was £2,100 I kind of like regretted not to pull the trigger at that point because that was the cheapest I could ever find but recently a couple of weeks ago I actually found the X-H2S on sale on a couple of websites for £1,900 and I thought that, that was an insanely great price. It's like buying a Ferrari and only paying for a Toyota, couldn't say no to that. So I put my hands on my new camera just about two weeks ago and in this video I would like to give you my initial thoughts on switching to the X-H2S from the X-D4 so you will know what to expect when you do the same. What the heck happened here? Where did the snow come from? That's insane. I can't flipping believe this. Look at that. Guy just left a package in there. Are you serious? Mm, you're excited, dude. You're excited. You're excited. Straight out of the box, the body looks and feels like a huge upgrade. I love the new grip, and the extra 10% weight is hardly noticeable. So I fired up the camera and the menu inside was very similar to the X-D4, except a few things. First, it's much faster, like a lot more reactive. The speed with which you can move in the x hs menu is almost smartphone-like, which is insane. I guess the new processor speeds up the camera significantly compared to older models, so that makes a difference. Another difference is when you record videos, you can set everything within two separate menus on the x hs These are the movie mode and the media recording settings. On the x hs it's actually three different menus with much less option to choose from. But the main thing is it's quite easy to transition, I have to say, because most of the controls and settings are identical. In the X-H2S, it's like more than what you have with the X-T4, but not in a confusing redesigned way, if you know what I mean. The buttons are also customizable, almost exactly the same way. So I had my X-H2S set up real quick, just like my old Fuji's. And now the camera feels like I know it very well. There's one thing I had to Google real quick. It's the shortcut for formatting the SD and the CFX Best card. Now, instead of holding the bin and pressing in the rear dial, now it's hold the bin and hold down on the D-pad. In terms of button layouts, we have a few extra buttons and less dials. I didn't find it confusing at all. I thought it was quick and easy to get used to. Some of the bigger changes are like the autofocus switch, for example, which is now a button you push in and then you choose up and down on the DP and then choose OK. Well, it's not a big deal, I think. And the same thing goes for the ISO. You press it in and then choose. It's simple and easy in my eyes. Now let me tell you three things that has greatly improved and it becomes very obvious as soon as you start using the XH2S. First of all, the viewfinder's image quality is so much better. When you're looking through it, it almost looks sharper than real life. Every time I use the camera, it makes me want to look through it instead of looking at the LCD screen. I wish I could show you. Second, the audio quality coming out of the XH2S is much, much better when you compare it to the X-T3 or the X-T4. And that's a brilliant news for me because I love me good audio. Third, and oh my God, I have to say it's not even comparable to the X-T3s or the X-T4s. It's the autofocus, completely different level. Let me put it this way. If you set it correctly, no matter what you record with the camera, you just have complete faith in it. So far, the X-H2S's autofocus had never let me down. I'm in love with it. Not to mention that the new 3.0 firmware update just came out a few days ago and apparently it made the autofocus even better. How is that possible? So let me summarize it. All the custom dials, new button layout, menu, and the option to record onto a CFX Best card are all features that actually speed up your workflow and makes your life easier. And oh, uh, yeah, I forget to mention, I tried to record 4K 120 frames per second onto an SD card, just a regular V60, and it worked no problem. You have to see this, the quality is insanely good. Just check this out, oh my God, even in low light. Unreal. The fact that it worked was a big surprise for me because of course some of the recording options like internet progress for example are only available if you have a CFX Press card which I have to say it's going to cost you a lot of extra money on top of the fortune you already spent on the camera. So I looked into this just for the CFX Press card itself. The best value for money I find so far is a decent size wise 512 gig and the brand's called Angel Bird for £150 plus um, if you don't have a card reader, then you have to spend another 40 or 50 quid for the card reader itself. And listen, if you'd like to know more about the camera, I just figured out everything there is to know about the new F-Lock 2, like how to expose for it in proper daylight or in extreme low light, how to color grade it for the best result. So if you'd like to know more about that or just simple camera gear related reviews, then 
just check out my next videos coming out shortly because those are going to be the topics of my next video. So thank you so much. See you in the next one. Bye.